People who have had a stalker. How did you realize you were being stalked? Part 3. For more such content, please like and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Knew I was being stalked. After an individual I went on a date with showed me picture albums with photos he had collected over the years of me in newspaper and magazine articles, it then catapulted into him going into a psychiatric hospital because he threatened to kill himself, me and my disabled brother, when he refused to accept I didn't want a relationship with him. I ended up moving out of town, taking a break job, and my brother with me. I was a director at a nonprofit for individuals with disabilities. We had a lot of great volunteers. One of them was a pretty good guy who always, for years, was super helpful and great with the kids. Always received the Volunteer of the Year Award, kind, nice, a bit socially awkward, but seemed like a nice man. Over time, he and I became friends, not intimate friends, but friendly. He asked me out for a date, and I thought, why not? Date was okay, but I wasn't super attracted to him. We kept in touch because of the nonprofit. Fast forward, Guy starts to offer to help me out with small things at my house, Again, thinking, we are just friends. Should be okay. I said yes, one day proceeds to show me. Picture albums of newspaper clippings that he had collected over the years, but all the clippings were with me in them. Then starts to tell me the feelings he's had for me over the past years and how he can't get over me. At that point, I knew there was a serious issue. I had been being stalked and I had invited the stalker into my home, I calmly and very nicely tell him as much as I appreciate his help and friendship. I don't share the same feelings. I also told him to seek out a therapist because this wasn't normal. I thought he got it, and we part ways as friends, I think. He stopped coming to the place I worked. It was a relief. But I do get a message on my machine from him saying he's seeing a therapist, and maybe if he kept seeing her that we might see each other again. I ignore it. Then he started to show up at my house at night unannounced, offering me money or odd things like a can of paint. He knew I was painting the inside of my house and that I was struggling financially because I was working for a non-profit and taking care of my disabled brother, I never took the money or the darn paint, told him thank you, but no. I also told him he needed to stop coming over or the next time I would call the police. Then one evening, I hear something at my back door, slider. It's him, of course, and he wants to talk. I notice the door isn't locked. I quickly move to close the lock, but he shoves his way inside and refuses to leave, insisting we talk it out following me around my house, talking incessantly in circles about our relationship and how it's affected him, how he's seeing that therapist, etc. Xiao, I call my best girlfriend down the street whose boyfriend lives with her. I take my brother, leave my house and go to her place. Dude shows up, of course, and my friend's boyfriend stands in front of me and my brother with his 45 on his side, and after about 15 minutes of nonsense, he leaves. Turns out he went back to my house. I get there. He's upstairs in my room. Going through my underwear drawer, I call the police. They get there and try to escort him out. He begins resisting. He punches a wall, knocks over some furniture, won't give up the panties, and says on his way out, he needs something to remember me by and hope you know what you've done. Some time goes by, and one day I get a call from a woman therapist who tells me she has been seeing this man because he was so distraught after our breakup. She said she was required by law to call me and tell me he told her he had a plan to kill himself, me and my disabled brother. She advised me to take out a restraining order, which I did, and that she gave him a choice to go voluntarily to a hospital or be taken in by police. He spent time in a hospital, and I lived in fear for months after his 30 days in the hospital were up, had to make repeated calls to get him served. Every night I put two Awo fours down between the walls and the doors and on top of the windows fearing he would break in. I took a new job 45 miles away, put my house up for sale, brought my brother with me. After about a year, I felt like I was ready to perhaps start dating. I was pretty isolated in my new place, so I set up a profile online. Within a few weeks, I get a match there he is. It's my stalker. 
He made no further contact than a brief message mentioning, you probably don't date guys like me. But it completely made sense that he would do that. He always felt entitled to me just because of his feelings when there never was a relationship. Account 2. I work at a church. Obviously, I speak in public every Sunday. Random people always walk in to observe the service. One week, this young woman walks in, and she is clearly homeless. We deal with a lot of homeless who come through our church. We always try to treat them with respect. I don't want anyone to feel like they are less than because they can't afford a home. If possible, we connect them with services to get them into a better situation. Well, she keeps coming back week after week, and I start getting strange emails that are pages and pages long. I worked at a psychiatric hospital as a chaplain, and it looked like the rantings of somebody who was schizophrenic. It took me a while to realize that these were coming from her, and they were talking about how we were going to move in together and have children. Eventually, things come to a head, and I have to tell her that she can no longer come to the church because the emails are becoming incessant. She disappears. And then one night when I'm working at the homeless shelter, I'm leaving at 3 a.m., and when I walk outside, she's sitting next to my car. She's irate and clearly wants to hurt me. I have to convince her to come inside the shelter. The people who are volunteering think she's just someone who wants to stay the night. No one seemed to be getting the clues that this woman is insane and is on the verge of attacking me. I eventually make my way out to my car, and she runs out and blocks me from getting in. I'm able to go around the other side and jump in through my passenger door and make my way home. Thirty minutes later, she's pounding on my front door. She's clearly been watching my coming and going for some time and knew exactly where I lived. I called the police and they came and picked her up. Rather than arrest her, they took her to a fast food restaurant and dropped her off. To make a long story short, I end up getting a restraining order, which she violates. She's arrested and is taken to a psychiatric facility. She's in the facility for nearly six months, until the judge tells her that she needs to leave the area and never return, otherwise she'll be permanently institutionalized. Thankfully, she got the hint and left. I used to fantasize when I was younger about a woman being obsessed with me and forming a relationship with her. I wish I could say that it was as romantic as I imagined. Instead, I was worried for the safety of my family and wasn't sure from week to week what would happen. When somebody is that mentally unstable, they could easily murder your whole family. I worked with patients who did that at the psychiatric hospital. The really fucked thing is that the leaders in my church didn't really seem to care. I tried to tell them the toll it was taking on me physically and mentally. They just kind of stared at me vacantly. Now, whenever anybody comes to me and tells me that they have a stalker, I give them my full attention and do everything I can to help them because I remember that feeling of being helpless. I don't ever want anybody to feel the way I felt. Account 3. Long story short, started happening my sophomore year of high school by a kid a year older than me. Mostly able to brush stuff off as coincidence until college. My junior year of college, he started loitering around where the marching band practiced. That summer was hot F, so pretty much every guy was shirtless and most girls were just in a sports bra. I got a text from an old high school friend that apparently the creep took a pic of me and two of the other girls in my section and was passing it around. He was outside of my class buildings. Then one day, I was walking home from class with a friend, and as we got to my block, I saw him a few houses down. I told my friend I needed to go home with her and called the cops. The cops told me, don't go out after dark. It was 4 p.m. and sunny, fucking useless. During this time, I was working one day a month at my job to stay on payroll until summer. He came in once a month, only ever during my shift. That summer, it escalated to be about once a week he was coming. My manager hid me every time, though. One evening, it was me and a co-worker I hated on second shift. Co-worker didn't believe me that Creep had been stalking me. Found out later it was him giving out my schedule. Creep came in. I didn't realize because I was busy with a task on the floor. He grabbed me. Thankfully, another customer was there. Heard the struggle and got me free. I reported it to the police the next day. The officer said that the case likely wouldn't go very far, but he'd tell Creep to knock it off. Well, about ten minutes after I leave the police station, 
I got a call from my assistant manager asking what the fuck is happening because Creep showed up to my job with a baseball bat threatening to cave my head in. If there wasn't video, I'd prob not believe the cartoony nature. Cop called about 20 minutes later and told me that Creep was being arrested and charged with a couple different things for things he said to the cop when they had a ought talk and the incident at my job. Creep took a deal. Judge reamed him out, accepted his guilty plea, but gave him the max sentence for what he pled to, seven years probation altogether. She also issued a stay away order because I didn't qualify for a restraining order. You have to have some kind of relationship to get one in PA. He was permabanned by the company I worked for. He showed up one night when my manager was covering a shift. She called the cops, turned out his buddy he brought with him had a warrant. He was arrested. Creep posted a video to Facebook with my address telling people to kill my cats and maybe me too. Same friend as before sent me a screen recording and says he reported the video, but wanted to warn me. A few other friends from high school saw it and reached out to make sure I was safe after reporting the video. The recording was turned over to police. He spent a few weeks in jail for violating probation. In law school, he started vandalizing the cat colonies I helped care for. Idiot never stopped to realize we had trail cams set up to monitor the cats and the feeding locations. He tried following me from the location once in his car, but thankfully I know alleys and vacant lots in that area from trapping and was able to weave to a police station. Cops in that jurisdiction were fucking useless again. So now I'm still looking over my shoulder, unsure of if he knows where I'm living now, when he's going to pop up again. Account 4. I was seeing this guy and my work shift changed, so I was getting off super late. One night I happened to notice he was there across the parking lot watching me. This happened several times and he denied it. I stopped seeing him immediately and ignored him for a year or so before he moved on to another girl. Account 5. He moved three houses down from my mom, who I see at least three times a week. We live in a big city with lots of different options. He wouldn't stop telling me how much he was in love with me, even though I was very clear that I was happy with my BF at the time. And even when my BF and I broke up, I still said there would never be anything between us, and I didn't feel the same for him. Naive of me was still nice to the guy. We worked together in a small company. But then he told me that I caused his depression and wouldn't stop following me at work events. Apparently, I caused his depression by seeing someone new. I blocked him for the final time off everything. He eventually left the company. This was about four years ago. A couple of weeks ago, he approached me on LinkedIn. I didn't block him on it, but I disconnected from him. Seems like he paid for a membership to message me as you can only message people you're connected with. Anyway, the whole message tone was that he missed me, but he spoke as if we were in an actual relationship. We were not, I didn't reply, and blocked him, side note. A month before, that message, my current BF, got a notification that he was looking at my BF's profile. We didn't think anything of it, as we are in the same industry. Still gives me the creeps. Haven't heard from him since, but still get paranoid if I see a car like his driving around. Account 6. I had an ex-boyfriend stalk me. He was crazy possessive during the relationship. He told me who I was allowed to talk to, what I was allowed to wear, how my parents were secretly trying to turn me against him and control me, and would call me every night for an hour or more. He also demanded that I tell him where I was and who with if we weren't together. It was pretty intense. One night I went to a party with my friends, and this asshole was obsessively walking around the town it was in, trying to find the party. After I broke up with him, he started turning up everywhere I was. He slept in his car in the empty block by our house. He would sit at my work for ages while I was working. He sat outside the public pool while we had a school swimming thing on. I was in high school. One morning while I was walking to the school bus, he pulled over and tried to convince me to get in his car. He was unlicensed. BTW? It was even more scary because his father owned a remote property and a lot of weapons. Fuck that. That was the day I decided we should go to the police. I got an AVOA. That's an apprehended violence order to non-Australians. Call it a restraining order in America. And he wasn't allowed to contact me in any way. Be near my house or work, linger by my school, and otherwise had to stay away from me.
He broke it at least once to leave a bunch of DVDs on the doorstep that I threw out. But then I didn't see him again for a couple of years. And only by chance, I was still scared to go out alone for a long, long time. Even now, 16 years later, I get quite anxious if I'm out and often need to call my husband to calm me down. Despite living on the other side of the country, apparently he's now married with a child, which is nice. His older sister watches my Instagram stories, though, which is weird, but kind of funny. Account 7. An ex, boyfriend of mine, took unsolicited photos of me while I was asleep at his house once. Obviously, this enraged me, and I had to tell him to delete those photos when I had found out months after the breakup. Instead, he kept them. And when I tried to block him, he created other accounts to send these photos to me. I threatened the police and moved to a different location a couple weeks after. The move was already planned. I'm unsure of how long it was since then. But there were no more messages up until the one where he sent me my current address. He is now spending time in jail. Account 8. I have an abusive ex that stalks me in a way. Every few years, he will text me or unblock me on Facebook briefly and just remind me he's still keeping tabs on me. I imagine he pays one of those sites for my current number. I left him over 10 years ago. I've had several number changes since then. I've had exes that would repeatedly try and contact me through multiple means and keep at it for a while. My last one finally stopped about two and a half years ago. Most eventually give up, except for that one. But I've never dealt with stalking to a degree I felt I was in danger, more just messing with my heed and sense of security. Account 9. Met a guy on a night out, was just out of a really long-term relationship, and was looking for a hookup. We exchanged numbers, and I went out with him twice. Being perfectly transparent that I was only looking for a hookup, which he claimed to be fine with. On our second meeting, he had bought me a gift and was way too into me and was catching feelings. So I kindly told him after that meeting that I didn't want to meet up again. He sent me messages begging to hook up again with, I think, I just ignored. He showed up at the bar we had met when I was there with friends and basically trailed me around all night, told my friend he had fallen in love with me, and she asked him to leave us alone at the end of the night. My friend and I were at a taco cart, and I guess he had grown angry of being avoided, so he just walked right up to me and clobbered me across the face, knocking me to the ground and ran off into the night. He claimed to have no recollection of doing it. I filed a police report, but they were very unsympathetic. I was an expat in a foreign country. They contacted him, and he texted in a panic that he would be in trouble. But nothing ever came of it because I very soon left the country. The weirdo still contacted me over the next weeks, months, to say how much he liked me and hoped we could get together again. If I had still been living in that city, I would have felt in very real danger of him showing up randomly and attacking me again. Account 10. Broke up with a girl that tried poking holes in my condoms to get pregnant when we were 17. She stalked me for five years afterwards, moving to the same area I was in all the time within a few months of me moving apartments while in college, and sometimes the same building. She terrorized me with the constant threat of causing a scene and making fake accusations in front of acquaintances to try to make sure I was always isolated. Eventually, I switched to a more prestigious university because I got a bunch of scholarships and she couldn't move near me because I chose to live in the dorms. So I got a small break from the insanity for six months, started an FWB IE, friends with benefits, relationship with two girl students in the same university from Brazil that were dorm mates at the time. And at the time we're talking about getting the apartment we would all eventually move to together while going to get lunch. This stalker girl comes out of nowhere around the corner all of a sudden and starts a huge scene full of crazy accusations and lies in the usual attempt she used to make to keep me isolated. Luckily for me, I had told them both about this craziness, and they immediately started getting in her face when she was doing it. The stalker girl tried to hit me when the two girls were making her out to be crazy. So she tried to attack me to make the whole situation worse. They beat the stalker girl's ass like it was nothing. Then after a few minutes of them grilling her about not stalking me anymore. We left back to their dorm room. Account 11. 
I'm not a victim of stalking, but I am a police officer who has investigated dozens. Usually the first thing that clues women in is when I tell them that they behaviors they're describing from their partner or ex-partner are stalking. Unwanted, obsessive, fixated, and repeated. All those things like turning up places unannounced. Constantly needing to know where you are and who you're with. Unwanted gifts and services that give him a sense of ownership and entitlement over you. Infiltration of your support groups and isolating you from them by working on them or on you. Enlistment of third parties. The difference between domestic abuse and stalking is often academic. Stalking is not just being followed by someone you don't know. Account 12. Not me, but my aunt. She is still battling for custody over her kid, and the dad bragged about stalking them and sharing their location by using her phone. The thing is, he only had access to her phone before the kid was born and before they split up which is the scary part. Count 13. It was a complicated, intense friendship to start. She has intimacy issues and triggered by whatever. So she filed a restraining order to keep me form the coffee shop we frequented. So before the hearing in front of the judge, I read her statement and thought, there are things here that she would only know if she stalked me.